You mentioned dependencies a few yeah. times. Yeah. What do you mean by dependencies? Well, what I mean is in um, in language, there's kind of three structures to three components to the structure of language. One is the sounds. So cat is k, at, and t in English. I'm not talking about that part. I'm talking. And then there's two meaning parts, and those are the words. And and uh, you were talking about meaning earlier. So words have a form, and they have a meaning associated with them. And so cat is a full form in English, and it has a meaning associated with whatever a cat is. And then the combinations of words. Uh, that's what I'll call grammar or syntax. And uh, that's like when I have a, a combination like the cat or two cats, okay? So uh, where I take a, a two different words there and put them together and I get a compositional meaning from putting those two different words together. And, and so that's the syntax. And in any sentence or utterance, whatever I'm talking to you, you're talking to me, we have a bunch of words and we're putting them together in a sequence. They It turns out they are connected so that every word is connected to just one other word in that in that sentence mm -hmm. and so you end up with what's what's called a, technically a tree it's a tree structure so there where there's a root of that of that utterance of that sentence and then there's a bunch of dependence like branches from that root that go down to the words the words are the leaves in this metaphor for a tree so a tree is also sort of a mathematical construct yeah yeah so it's, it's a graph a theoretical thing exactly. graph theory thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh so in in the I mean, it's fascinating that you can break down a sentence into a tree and then one every word is hanging on to another it's depending on it that's one. right and and everyone agrees on that so all linguists will agree with that no oh, so one this no is not one, a controversial that thing. is not controversial there's nobody sitting here i do not think so. mad at you i don't think so okay there's think, no linguist sitting there no, mad at this. No, I think in every language, I think everyone agrees that all sentences are trees at some level. Can I pause on that? Sure. Because it, it's to me just as a layman, it uh, it's surprising. Yeah. That you can break down sentences in many, mostly all languages, all languages, I think, into a tree. I think so. That's. Weird. I, I've never heard of That's anyone weird. disagreeing with that. That's weird. The details of the trees are what people disagree okay. about. Well, okay, so what's uh, what's at the root of a tree? How do you construct? How hard is it? What is the process of constructing a tree from a sentence? Uh, well, this is where, you know, depending on what your, th there's different theoretical notions. I'm going to say the simplest thing, mm -hmm. dependency grammar. It's like a bunch of people invented this. Tenier was the first French guy back in, I mean, the paper was published in 1959, but he was working on the 30s and stuff. So, and, and it goes back to, uh, you know, philologist Pinini was doing this in, ancient uh, India, okay? And so, you know, doing something like this, the simplest thing we can think of is that there's just connections between the words to make mm -hmm. the the utterance. And so let's just say I have like two dogs entered a room, okay? Here's a sentence. <laughs> and so uh, we're connecting two and dogs together. Mm -hmm. That's like, there's some dependency between those words to make mm -hmm. some bigger meaning. And then we're connecting dogs now to uh, entered, mm -hmm. right? And we connect a room somehow to entered. And so I'm going to connect uh, to room and then room back to entered. These are, that's the tree. Is I The, the root is entered. That's the, the thing is like an entering event. That's what we're saying here. And the the subject, which is whatever that dog is, is two dogs it was. And, and the connection goes back to dogs, which goes back to, then that, that goes back to two. I'm just, that that's my tree. Mm -hmm. it, it starts at entered, goes to dogs, down to two. And on the other side, after the verb, the object, it goes to room, and then that goes back to the, the determiner or article, whatever you want to call that word, uh. So there's a bunch of categories of words here we're noticing. So there are verbs. Those are these things that typically mark, uh, they refer to events and states in the world. And there are nouns, which typically refer to people, places, and things is what people say, but they can refer to other more, they can refer to events themselves as well. They're, they're, they're marked by you know how they how they get you the category the part of speech of a word is how it gets used in language it's uh, like that's how you decide what the what the category of a word is not not by the meaning but how it's how it gets used how it's used yeah. what's usually the root is it going to be the verb that defines the event usually it... usually yes yes okay yeah i mean if i don't say a verb then there won't be a verb and so it'll be something else what if you're messing are we talking about language that's like correct language what if you're doing poetry and messing with stuff is it then? Then rules go out the window, right? Then it's no. 
You're still no, 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 no. You're constrained by whatever language you're dealing with. Probably you have other constraints in poetry, such that you're like usually in poetry. There's multiple constraints that you want to like. You want to usually convey multiple meanings is the idea, mm -hmm. and maybe you have like a rhythm or a rhyming structure as well. And depending on so, but you usually are constrained by your the rules of your language for yeah. the most part, and so you don't violate those too much you can violate them somewhat but not too much so it has to be recognizable as your language like in english i can't say dogs to entered room ah i mean i meant that you know two dogs entered a room and I, I i can't mess with the order of the the articles the articles and the nouns you just can't do that in some languages you can you can mess around with the order <laughs> of words much more i mean you speak russian mm -hmm. russian has a much freer word order than english and so in fact you can move around words in a, you know i told you that english has the subject verb object word order so does russian but Russian is much freer than English. And so you can actually mess around with the word order. So probably Russian poetry mm -hmm. is going to be quite different from English poetry because the word order is much less constrained. Yeah, there's know. a much more extensive uh, culture of poetry throughout the history of, of the last hundred years in Russia. And I, I was always wondered why that is, but it seems that there's more flexibility in the way the language is used. There's more, you're morphing the language easier by altering the words, altering the order of the words, messing with it. Well, you can just m mess with different things in each language. And so in Russian, you have case markers, right? On the end, which are there's these endings on the nouns, which tell you how it connects, each noun connects to the verb, right? We don't have that in English. And so when I say, um, Mary kissed John, I don't know who the agent or the patient is, except by the order of the words, right? In in Russian, you actually have a marker on the end. If you're using a Russian name, and each of those names, you'll also say, is it, you know, agent, it, it'll be the, uh, you know, a nominative, which is marking the subject, or, or an accusative will mark the object. And you could put them in the reverse order. You mm -hmm. could put accusative first, as you could put subject, you could put... Um, the patient first, and then the verb, and then the 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 subject, and that would be a perfectly good Russian sentence, and it would still mean Mary. I could say John kissed Mary, meaning Mary kissed John, as long as I use the case markers in the right way. You can't do that in English, and so uh, <laughs> I love the terminology of agent and patient, and <laughs> yeah, uh, and the other ones you used. <laughs> well, those are sort of linguistic terms, correct? Those are those are for like kind of meaning. Those are meaning, and and subject and object are generally used for position. So yeah. subject is just like the thing that comes before the the verb, and the object is one that comes after the verb. The agent is kind of like the thing doing it. That's kind of what right. that means, right? The, the the subject is often the person doing the action, right? The thing so yeah okay this is yeah. fascinating so okay. how hard is it to form a tree in general is there um is there a procedure to it like if you look at different languages is it supposed to be a very natural like is it automatable or is there some human genius involved in because i think it's pretty automatable at this point people can figure out the words are they can figure out the morphemes which are the technically morphemes are the the minimal meaning units within a language okay and so when you say eats or drinks, it actually has two morphemes in, in English. There's there's the there's the root, which is the verb, and then there's some ending on it which tells you, you know, that's the third person, uh, right. third person singular. Can you say what so morphemes are? Morphemes are just the minimal meaning units within a language. And then a word is just kind of the things we put spaces between in English, and, uh, and they have a little bit more. They have the morphology as well. They have the endings, this inflectional morphology on the endings on the roots. They modify something about the word that yeah. adds additional meaning. They tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we have a little bit of that in English, very little. You have much more in Russian, yeah. for instance. And and uh, but we have a little bit in English. And so we have a little on the on the nouns. You can say it's either singular or plural, and and you can say uh, same thing for um, for for verbs, like simple past tense, for example. So you know, no, notice in English we say drinks. Uh, you know, he drinks, but everyone else says, I drink, you drink, we drink. It's unmarked in, in a way. And then, but in the past tense, it's just drank. There, for everyone, there's no morphology at all for past tense. It's, it, there is morphology, it's marking past tense, but it's kind of, it's an irregular now. <laughs> so we don't even, you know, it drink to drank, you know, it's not even a regular word. So mm -hmm. in most verbs, many verbs, there's an ed we kind of add. So walk to walked, we add that to say it's the past tense. That I just happened to choose an irregular because it's a high frequency word. And the high frequency words ha tend to have irregulars in English for. What's an irregular? That's irregular is just, uh, there's, it, there isn't a rule. So oh. drink to drank is an, ir it's an irregular. Drink, drank. Okay, okay. Versus As opposed walked. to walk, walked, talked, yeah. talked. And there's a lot of irregu 
irregulars in English. There's right? a lot of irregulars in English. The, the the frequent ones, the common words, tend to be irregular. The le- there's many many more un- <laughs> I- I- um, low frequency words, yeah. and those tend to be those are regular ones. The evolution of the irregulars are fascinating because it it's essentially slang that's sticky because mm-hmm. you're breaking the rules, and then everybody uses it and doesn't follow the rules. Yeah, and they they say screw it to the rules. Yeah, <laughs> it's fascinating.